Hey folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to build a Gantt chart timeline in Google Sheets. So you can put your tasks in on a table like this on the left. You can see how they how they pan out over time. All of these different colors are chosen from one of these drop downs over here. So we'll set these up as well. So you can create your very own timeline Gantt chart in Google Sheets. Let's dive in and see how it's done. Just before we get started, I just wanted to show you this Gantt chart template that's ready to go. So if you wanted to skip this and just go straight in with a pre-built template, um, you can get this from my website. I'll pop the link in the description box below. This, this particular template has lots more functionality. It has a progress bar that's dynamic with these uh, labels as well. And you can see that these are grayed out when the task is completed. It also has it highlights the current day of the week and it's completely dynamic. So you don't need to add any more days any more columns at the end because the sheet will completely update itself. So if you want to pick that up, head over to my website with the link in the description box below and you can get started straight away. But if not, let's just dive in and see how this is built. Let's start with adding a drop down chip in here. So if we go to drop down, so to keep things simple, we're just going to name these as colors. So we'll just add a few for now. So we've got something to work with, but you can add as many as you like, all the different colors you want there. Once we've got that, we can just copy this down to all the rows we want to show that in, and then we'll see these in here. And of course we can edit these as well so that we can actually show them as a particular color. And we'll apply that to all of those we've just copied across there. So any one of these that we choose now will have actual color chosen in here. That's the first step. These, these are all pretty straightforward. You know, you just, you can call these whatever you like really, but you ideally, well, you need a start date and you need an end date. And then this days is just a formula that you can see we're calculating. You can ignore this first part if we just take that out for a second. So what we're doing is we're calculating the networking days between these two dates. So we're taking the first date and the last date, and that calculates the networking days, you know, excluding the weekends to give you a number of days for that task. Okay. So let's move on to the fun part and build this part down here. So what we need to do, we need to create the dates along the top here. Now, the simplest way to do this would be to just use the min function in here. So if we just, if we just say equals min, so this is the one we want, and we want the minimum date from this column here. So we just drop that nine to make it open-ended and that will give us, and we can't see it right now because the text is formatted as white. So let's just highlight all of these along here and we'll change the background color to something darker. There we go. We can see that four there now. So this is just edited right now as a custom date time. So we're just showing the day in here right now. By default, you'll, you'll probably have something like this set, but in, in our case, we only want to show the day. So that's what we've got here right now. So that's our first thing. So whatever your lowest date is on this table, it will show here. So the next thing, these are really easy. We just do it in equals this one plus one. Oh, plus one, and that will give us one extra day. And now what we can do is just copy this all the way across to the end and we get all of our days that we want. So that's our days on the top. Now for the, the actual Gantt chart in here itself, what we want to do is we want to apply a conditional formatting to this whole area down here. So we want to select all of these cells and now by default on this particular sheet, I've got about three months worth of dates along the top here, but you can have as many as you like. So once they're all selected, we just right click and choose more, few more cell actions and then go up to conditional formatting. And you can see this is the range that we've got selected up here. And so what we want to do is choose a custom formula, one of the right at the bottom here. And in here, we're going to type our formula. So the formula is going to be, we want an and, so this is a multiple conditions that need to be true for this to happen. So what we want is this L4, so we want L4 to be greater than or equal to, and we're looking in the start date column here. So we want this cell here, so that's F5. And then the second condition here we want is that we want L4 to be less than or equal to G5, our end date. And then we want one final condition in here which is that the cell that we chose as our drop down over here, we want that to contain a certain text value. 
So we want our B5 to equal, and then we're going to type in some text in here in double quotes. So let's choose the blue that we added there. Now on the face of it, this, this won't work as it currently stands right now because we need to add in some absolute references to these locations. So in here, what we need to do is add a dollar sign between the L and the four. So we're locking it to the row in this particular case. And the F5 location, which is our start date, we want to lock that to the column. So we want to add a dollar sign before the F, before the column. And then we'll do the same again for this end date. So we want the we want to lock the column in there, uh, lock the, the row in this case, row four, because we're locking this particular row here. And then for the G5, we're going to lock that column there. And then for the B5, we also want to lock that column there as well. So then what we need to do is choose what color we want to show for that progress bar. So let's just choose something like this blue here, and then we can click done. Now we don't have anything in here right now, so let's just choose blue. And now you can see we've got our progress bar showing. And so that's from the 4th of December to the 8th of December. So you can see that that's, that's showing those, those values there. So if we just click back in here, anywhere in here, we can click because we've applied this conditional formatting to this whole range. And we can just click on this one again. And to make life simpler, because we've written this out once, we can just add another rule now. So the rule in this particular case will be, all we need to do is change this to say green, and then we'll choose this one as some green color. And then we can add another rule and we'll just change this one now to red. And then we can just choose a red color in here. And you can see that's already selected there now. And so you just keep re repeating that process, adding another rule for all the colors that you've got within your drop down fields over here to match those. And so we're done now, we've got three rules here, so we can close this. But to open it up again, you just click in, in any one of these cells over here and then go down to conditional formatting and you'll see them again. And as I say, you could add another rule, but you'll start from scratch. So the best thing is to open a rule and then add another rule from there because it will copy all of the details from that current rule. Okay, so you can see now on this third one here, if we choose green here, you can see that populates over here now. So that is the easiest way to build a Gantt chart in Google Sheets. You'll notice on the demonstration sheet that I showed earlier on, that this is all the same except I have a lot more dates going on up here so I look at the day of the week and I also check the, the week number and the month of the year as well and the year and the good thing is with this this is completely dynamic so you also see that we're highlighting the current day um, and this progress bar chart will change depending on what you enter into here this will change so you can sort of keep progress about how far you are on, on a particular task so this is a bit more complex this particular Gantt chart I do actually sell this on my website and I'll pop a link in the in the description box below if you want to go and check that out. But you know, to get to get you off the ground, this one will is easy to make. You've seen that, that how easy that is to make there. And as I say, when you tick a box like this, you could hide these and then that would hide the particular row. So we click done there. That hides that row in here now as well. But the thing with the the template that I've got here, all of these change automatically. So you never need to add any rows at the end because the sheet will automatically update. So have a go at building it yourself or go check out that template on my website. And as I say, I'll put the link in the description box below if you want to go and check that out. But I hope that's helpful guys. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.